Hello, I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to outline the uppercase letter Z and fill it with some simple scrolls. And as a bonus, I've included a super easy dragonfly pattern. I'll leave a link to download it in the notes below this video. Now before I start on the last letter of the alphabet, I want to come back to the beginning. Honestly, I was very hesitant to start this series of quilling tutorial for years because I'm not confident being in front of a camera, even if it is just my hands. But with all your encouragement and kind comments, I have to say it's gotten easier each time I do it. So thank you for telling me how much impact I've had in your quilling. That's what's kept me going and growing. Throughout all these monogram examples, I've tried to show you how flexible these projects are. My aim was to break down the steps and basic shapes so you can feel confident in getting similar results. My other goal was to show you how all these techniques can be applied to any letter you're making. I'm thrilled to hear my ebooks have been so well received. It's incredibly gratifying to know I've created something that has been helpful to so many. If you'd like to be notified about my next projects, please subscribe to my email newsletter. I'll leave a link below. Whether you're new to my channel or you're intimidated to fill up a monogram, then you're going to love this tutorial. This is the fastest and easiest way to fill any letter using C scrolls and S scrolls. And of course, you can use this technique to fill things other than letters. This is a housewarming card I made years ago. Now I hope it goes without saying that just because these are the measurements here, you don't have to start with one just because it says one. You don't have to continue just as I show it here. This is mainly because my book was made for easier printing at 11 inches. You can start and stop these segments wherever you choose. So for me, I've actually decided to start and stop from one, two, three, four, and then start a new segment from five onward to 10. And that's because when I'm analyzing this in new eyes, I'm seeing that I want to come at this letter from one direction here and then the rest from this way. So I've actually adapted my pattern to suit my needs here and you're welcome to do the same. For my project, I'm planning on making the outline of the letter Z onto a card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I've taped this card to the back of this pattern. I went to a sunny window and shone a light through it and seen where to match up my card. And then I put some removable tape across the back here. And then I took a pen which had run out of its ink and traced the letter onto my card. So I've got my card already outlined. I'm now going to start outlining the strips on top of this letter. When I study the letter Z, these two edges line up. So to use a ruler, I've taken a stiff plastic card and applied some removable tape to align along those edges. So to get started, I'm only going to dip this segment in glue. So it's nice to run my tool along the edge just to make sure I'm butted up right against my plastic card here. Again, I'm just going to dip strategically in my puddle and only coat that small segment. And again, I'm just going to run my tweezer edge just to push it up against my ruler. Now that this ruler has served its purpose, I'm going to remove it to get it out of the way. Now I can easily move these two arms out of the way because they're just simply corners. And what I'm going to do now is dip these two segments into glue. And with a slight tug this way, I'm going to pull it taut. If you don't push towards that corner, both of them could waver just slightly. And I like to have taut edges. Okay, so now we can put this 
segment and this segment in place. And before I actually put glue on any segment, I just like to, you know, place it in place just to eyeball it, make sure everything is exactly as I want before I coat it with glue. Now I can do the same on this side. And again, I'm just going to test the placement. Now, because I want this corner to match up with this corner, I'm going to bring my ruler back and basically place it here to make sure those two corners match up exactly. Again, I'm just going to coat just that segment. I love having this straight edge here because it just helps you relax about making sure those two corners meet up. Now again, without any glue in place, I like to triple check that this end is going to match up nicely with this end here. I'm going to move my ruler over to this side now. And in this case, I'm going to coat both these segments with glue because otherwise it's going to be kind of hard to get in there. And I want any fudging to happen to happen now at this stage. I'm just going to use my card to help me align those two corners and I'm just giving a slight tug onto this, this corner here to make sure that this part is taut. Now I'm just going to pick up a little bit of glue, just a little bit, push aside that paper and run the glue onto the edge and then I'm going to use the edge of my tool to bring those corners together. We'll do the same with the last corner. And that's how we outlined the uppercase letter Z. For this last letter of the alphabet, I really wanted to give you my favorite way of filling in letters. And why is this my favorite? Because sometimes when you're in a rush, you need to fill something really quick and you don't know what you want to do, but you want it to look like you spent some time and you want it to look nice and fancy. This is what I tend to go toward because it is that easy. So let me show you how easy it is. I did not measure a single strip here and out of one strip of 11 inches, I would just snip whenever I wanted. So some were short, some were long. So let's just go ahead and do that. And it doesn't matter what the lengths are because some can fill in gaps differently. Some can fill in the corners. Some can take up more room and expand and then give you some pockets of white areas here. And those are just as important as filling in the rest. So let me show you what I did to create like a C scroll. So it's super simple. I just softened both ends and then I would curl it up. And just as you've seen in my other videos, it's very normal for me to just go make it super tight. And then, so that's a typical C scroll. So how do I get it a little bit larger? I just unravel it and re-ravel that. So same for this side, we unroll it and re-roll it up. Now, if you want one side to be larger than another, you just make one larger than the other, <laughs> just like that, just that simple. Then for an S scroll, I'm going to soften one side, flip it around, soften the other side, and you already see the beginning of an S. So let's continue following that curve 
and ravel that up. And ravel that up. So same thing, unravel, re-ravel. And that's how I get my S curves. Now, you know, if, if you feel that that's too big for the space that you've got, not a big deal. You can shrink down one side, make one side a little larger. You can go ahead and trim, like unravel that and trim the end to make it shorter. Let's just say it was way too big for the space. You can just, you know, trim it and keep going. No need to waste that strip at all. And then I, I tend to prefer things being asymmetric. So one side larger, one side smaller. And you know, if you want it to take up a bit more space, okay, just go and re-ravel it more airy and you've got a different looking strip than when you first started. Now let's go on to the dragonfly. If you've never followed one of my patterns, then you're in for a treat. You can download this free dragonfly pattern from my blog and I'll leave a link in the notes below. This is so simple. I'll show you how quick and easy it is to make. So we're going to make some wings and we need two of these, okay? Now, this line here is a dotted line. So after you measure this strip length and then cut to that length, we're going to fold exactly there. So I just use my needle tool and mark it, score that line so that when you go to fold, you know exactly where to fold. So after folding, I'm just going to soften the strip on both sides and about midway down that length, I'm going to rub it back and forth across my fingers so that the end curled towards that fold. I'm going to do the same for this side. And when you put a dab of glue right there, we're going to form those wings. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to unfold it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the middle and just on one of the ends. Then I'm going to bring my tweezers and make sure that those two ends come together in the middle. To form the body, we're just going to measure that same strip length. And all my patterns are done like this. You don't ever need a ruler. So I'm just going to soften the body and bring those two ends together. And again, just put a little stream of glue right down the end and bring those two edges together. Couldn't be simpler, right? And now for the head, we're just going to coil that up and glue the end down. And this template here is that actual size, so you can use that for size reference if you like. So about there, right? And I'm just going to open up that end a little and hold that down until it's dry. So we're just going to make another wing and then I'll show you how to assemble that. Okay, I've got my four pieces ready to assemble and I tend to go to glue the wings together first. Just bring that together because I just generally like to see that being symmetrical and as close together as I can make it. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of glue just down the side of the body. Super simple, right? And just basically with this finger, I'm holding those items in place as I give it a good nudge and hopefully make sure that that's gonna have good adhesion there. Then from there, I'm just going to dab a little bit of glue on either side of the wings before I push the head towards it. And you might be wondering, why is it that I'm not holding it up in the air towards my face, that kind of thing? I actually prefer the work surface so that my elements stay straight as they set 
in place. Anyway, here's your simple dragonfly, and I hope you enjoy making them. I'd like to give you a big tip in my quilling practice, and that is to step away from your quilling. When you've completed something and you think you like it, and I find that for me, when I leave it alone, go do something else entirely for a day, two days, I come back and I see this with brand new eyes. And what I saw when I looked at this card after some time, and especially folding it, was I realized, okay, well, with the addition of the dragonfly, it actually made my eye feel like it's very asymmetric. And it's really easy to fix this. I could add another dragonfly here, you know, it, or I can make it turn and be very symmetrical that way. It's completely up to you. Another thing I noticed was my color differentiation was not as much as I had imagined. This is a dark blue. This is kind of like a medium blue. And when I looked at the coils this way, the color was quite distinct. And I thought, okay, well, that's a good kind of, you know, distinguishment. But then I realized, looking at it again, I realized I wanted more distinguishment. So I'm going to do some a little trick, which is to give the surface of this color a different hue. And I like doing that with an ink pad. So this is already glued down. How do I protect this guy from accidentally stamping it? I'm just going to use a post-it note and simply place it in that area. And if I need to, I could easily notch this out just so that I don't Just so I can get that adhesive area closer to where I want. And there we go. So I like using Brilliance uh, Platinum Planet. I've used this for several years and it still hasn't gone dry. And I really like the way it coats the surface of things. And you can buy quilling strips that have a metallic edge on it. But I find that I just rather apply this ink pad on it when whenever I want a little splash of bling because then I don't have to store and buy yet another type of you know paper it might be a different provider the widths might be different whatever and you can just see just as you know a few seconds all of a sudden I've given my quilling some bling it's quite fun And there's the before and after. And you can see it's given it a, a completely different kind of facelift. So if you find that you want to correct anything in your quilling, change it up, play with it. That's the key thing. Just consider this to be playing. I hope all these tips help you play with your quilling too. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up or even better, leave me a comment. I'd love knowing which tip you enjoyed most or how it's helped you in your quilling. Hearing your enthusiasm is what gives me energy. I'd also love to see your work, so tag me in your photos. 